All right, everyone, welcome back to episode 15 of Creators Unplugged. Today we have uh, an Apex coach, professional player, sponsored across all countries. Is that right? Is that about accurate? Yeah, about that. About Maybe, that. Yeah, the all continents. Right. All right. <laughs> We got Fujitora, uh, who is a, who is a competitive Apex player, um, and uh, just wanted to to bring him in today. And uh, we're happy you're here, man. Tell us about yourself a little bit. Uh, tell us what kind of projects you're working on, where people can find you, all the plugs, uh, you know, anything people, uh, anything you deem uh, you know important for uh, for people to find you. Uh, I mainly kind of reside on Twitter. Twitter is my main my main squeeze. Um, it's at it's Fujitora. It's cross all platforms: TikTok, Twitch, YouTube. Um, I don't really frequently use YouTube, so uh, if you're trying to go through that avenue, uh, you'll see literally one video. It's about thirty seconds. Is it a good That's video? About it. I don't even remember to be honest. <laughs> it's been so. It Would you put it out? Time. Yeah, it was at the time to where like uh, the first like huge like Twitch debacle came out. I was like, you know, I got like two viewers watching me, bro. Might as well try out some. Uh, Try out some YouTube, and then I was just like, "Yeah, this is not enjoyable for me." <laughs> I was gonna say because, like, where I found you the most is, is just live streaming. Oh uh, yeah, just watching I, your, your Apex streams. Um, yeah, that was like mainly during COVID because, um, oh yeah, prior back. So I'm Fuji. Um, you call me Troy Fuji. People, a lot of a lot of uh, people that watch like my streams that are like frequent, uh, usually know me by my first name. So I'm really? pretty transparent with my first name. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of like my frequent uh flyers they uh, know me by my first name and some of them i know in like real life and i've hung out with them like a bunch um i'm 26 i six it's a great age <laughs> yeah, i'm at my prime I'm 58 you know? so that's <laughs> nice <laughs> uh, i'm 26 uh great content on the side i'm going back to school to be like a, a full-time teacher going back for my master's nice um, I play competitive Apex, and uh, I started streaming around COVID because I was in the military at the time, and um, we had we worked two days on, and then we had six days off. So I was like, "What? Yeah, it, it was a pretty crazy schedule. It was pretty awesome. There were like back to back twelve hour shifts, and then you would just be off for six days. <laughs> what? Yeah, pretty sick." uh so that sparked like me streaming um before that really into fighting games huge uh cod kid i played like a lot of gbs and like wager matches back on like ps3 and stuff and that's Dude, pretty I, much it i thought when i was playing gbs like the first couple times i thought that was professional and people would oh, be really? like be like what do you do i was like dude i'm a professional gamer I'm a sponsor gamer and then I'd be like, yeah, it's GBs. Yeah, it and they're like, that's not what that is. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like my teenage self trying to brag and like build my own self-esteem up, trying to t <laughs> tell people. But that's not what that is. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, it's pretty much just like, like it's like pickup basketball games. That's yeah. That's where I could describe it. Dude, what's the, uh, what's the basketball league, the, the kids' basketball league? AAU? What, what's it called? A uh, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? Like the summer leagues? About. What is it called? That's gonna drive me crazy. Uh, wait, would you do uh, would you do game battles and and stuff like that for the fighting games as well? So fighting games, I would just go. Um, so New York is pretty like um, New York and like California are like two big states for fighting games. Um, Why? East Coast, West Coast beef. Yeah. So like back in the day when it was like you used to put like the quarters in the fucking machines. Like, um yeah i remember <laughs> yeah don't worry i'm aware yeah go ahead no so when like like during like those days where like it was you could only go to the arcade to play like street fighter 2 or like marvel's capcom 2 or like you know like those kind of games um it's that like, people were like recording it and it turned into like a whole like worldwide things like yeah dude that's fine let's do like people in other states yeah. So then all of a sudden it just grew into this East Coast, West Coast kind of like rivalry where what? it's like Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Um it kind of grew into that and then it just kept on evolving and now we're at the point to where uh every year well there's a series for like games. So every game has like a like a series tour. Except and, Smash, right? 
Smash. Uh, no, uh, no, Smash is part of the series tour. So there's like like X amount of tournaments that are called like quote unquote the majors. And like those you have to get like good standings in to have good standings in like Capcom Cup or, or Tekken World Tour. And you know, games like that or like the Smash, like the was, Smash stuff and Evo. I always thought Smash was or like Nintendo was not a a, a big supporter of Smash Drive. Like I've always heard the great yes. button smash like smash players in that community always had to like set up their own type of things like nintendo just wasn't um, as involved was mainly, as they could have been or should have been it was mainly for melee because melee is on the okay. game and that's just like in nintendo's eyes like yeah you're you're basically promoting a product that we no longer can update uh, or okay. you know sure so it's kind of like that so the prize pools weren't that good and um, the, the fighting game prize pools still aren't that good compared uh considering um the amount of people that enter the, like evo nowadays yeah so like the ratio for people entering and the entry fee and the past year because i think the past dude for like the whole weekend's like 145 bucks and i'm pretty sure um, for evo yeah it's this is right it's now? in vegas yeah i can look it up real quick uh evo 20 oh you're muted so Evo 2023. So just for Street Fighter alone, um, they're at 7K people. Entrance. Competitors. Yes. Okay. It says over 9,000 total for the rest of the games. Um, so I'm assuming by now, in this, this stage of the game, we're at like close to like 10K. 145 to like 10K. We got we got like a pretty got a pretty prize pool, you know. So, I think the payout was like maybe like a tenth of what like it should be, <laughs> and people are like, "Hey, the math isn't mathing for right. like <laughs> for the prize pools." So that's like a really big problem. But then again, like the FGC compared to like stuff like League of Legends, uh, even like Call of Duty, like CDL and stuff like that it the viewership and everything else is just not up to par compared to it yeah i was gonna say league like league dota those are gonna top i uh, cdl probably surpasses evo i would think uh yes yeah, uh, cdl they pay their players like crazy money and their yeah. price pool is like 250k plus and that's like a big part of that comes from view- viewership sponsorship Type thing, well, but the, the main thing with CDO is they kind of flip flop from YouTube to Twitch, kind of like what Overwatch did. And for a long time, it was just sponsorships. And um, I think Hex, the owner of Optic, went out and was like, kind of like just talking about like, hey, if you're looking to start an esports organization, don't you will lose so much money because <laughs> he was losing like so much money funding his CDL team, right. and that's why they didn't. That's like another part of the reason why they didn't. Um, get franchised in valorant because hex i think he merged with like two other organizations and then he bought them out after once he was back in the green like money wise and that showed like financial instability and that was mainly because he put, dumped so much money into cod team like I'm, I'm talking he buys them like chains like iced out chains you know uh like custom sneak like designer sneakers and stuff like that and like he he goes all out because again like optic was kind of built on call of duty so that's like the huge part of like their brand but now they're branching out to like apex um i don't think they're going back to valorant uh they did cs for a while but then they had that whole optic india thing to where the word.exe yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 i've seen that where he's like trying to delete it while they're looking at the the monitor yeah. <laughs> that was that was optic yeah that was optic india oh what a bummer Dude, that's so crazy to openly cheat. Plus, oh, but yeah, it's the thing is, like, you're surrounded by nerds, right? So, it's, <laughs> you're gonna get found out. It's not like you're you're out nerding the crowd. Everyone's competent to some level of technology, yeah. you know, like technology and, and gaming. Especially if you're on, if everyone's on PC, you're like, hey, man, hey, man, <laughs> like, come on. Well, there's on. there's some. Um... Funny thing about CS, there's a lot of like pros that or khakis that even in Apex, like uh example, optics uh IGL, Skittle Cakes. Um a lot of people thought oh, he is. had balls when they were on the come up, when they were doing like really good. Cause the the cool like thing about optics story is um they were 
couple through some challenges circuit like I'm at now, and they made up the pro league. Um, Skittles had some like controversy with console. He would win trade a lot, and um, he was like six man ranked, which is like you basically have another three stack. You're in like an Xbox party with them, and then you would kind of like tell them where you're at. If you, if a team's trying to like fight you, they're with you, shooting at them. You know, like you don't kill each other until end game, and then you would kind of just win trade. Um, he had a lot of that controversy. He conned TSM when TSM was at like TSM still like one of the best Apex teams in like the world. Yeah. But at that time, they were so dominant. Like people were literally like, I, it, "This is TSM's rotate. We're not going this way." But that's how like feared they were. And Skittle Cakes' team was landing on TSM and winning the con, and that like quite literally like shook up the scene for a little bit. It was pretty fun to watch. But, but yeah, Skittle Cakes he, has been like hackazated a lot. Wait, so okay, so it was like he found to to be legit in in. Oh yeah, no, he was. Doing? He okay. never he never cheated. Like he, uh, they did like a lot of things to like prove that he wasn't cheating, and like it was just like a lot of teams like doing like dumb plays, like leaving Godspot, and Skittle was just so like pervious to when those windows were opening. And it, it was just like a timing thing to where like he he just had like a really good timing of like they left and he took the spot and then they won the game. Okay, so they're good. Oh yeah, they're really good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All's well. <laughs> Wait. So okay. So back before we get away from fighting games. So do you still like like what's your fighting game of choice then? Like what what are the um... you know one or two games where you spend the most hours in? Probably like Tekken Seven and Street Fighter Five. Those are like the two games I spend a lot of time in. Both the current. Uh no, versions? so okay. Tekken Eight is coming out soon. Street Fighter Six is out already. That's really fun. Um, I haven't been really able to play it because I've been just in the lab for Apex. Yeah, just like just you know like theory crafting stuff, like vod reviewing it, it's dude, it's time consuming i'm surprised at how time consuming it is and i get why i understand like why a lot of people say like hey like if you you want to go prone something like you gotta love it because like it, it is very time it, it's more so you i watch the game more than i even play now because it's just like there's so much stuff on paper you can figure out before even like play in a game that you could rule out so, so like, do you even touch those games then for leisure right now, or is uh, that just yeah. like, okay, yeah? So that's yeah. your that's your getaway from serious. Uh, my main getaway is RPGs. I really? love JRPGs. I love JRPGs really so much. Yeah, I love. Okay. Them. Um, for like, so quick side note: I have almost every console like ever like made. What? Right next to my PC. It's like right under my right PC. Now? Yeah. Yeah. You have a Dreamcast? <laughs> uh yeah. yeah. All right. Checks out. So um I have like a bookshelf and then I have like a manga collection and then I have my whole collection of games. And I want to say 90% of my game library is just JRPGs. What? Yeah, from like PS1, PS2, um Dreamcast and like other like other platforms didn't really get the JRPGs is mainly like Sony. Yeah, I learned actually recently learned that Dreamcast, part of the reason Dreamcast suffered so much is that EA, there was an issue. They weren't getting games made for it by major publishers at the time. I wanna yeah. s- I I don't have someone to check fact check this uh, really quick, but I want to say EA was one of the publishers that wasn't gonna make games for Dreamcast. Uh, which is part of I assume part of the reason why it didn't do as well as it could have. I've um, yeah, it's just it was kind of so it's, it was kind of the situation of like um the Xbox One and the PS4. Yeah. To where it's just like other uh consoles have just a way better library and like games are expensive and were expensive then, you know? Yeah. So it's just kind of like, you know, you don't really have too many games. I don't really fire I don't feel, I don't feel like dropping this money for like a couple of games because honestly the main use from my understanding for the dream uh dreamcast was for marvel's capcom team that was like the most optimized version of marvel's capcom <laughs> was and, it seriously <laughs> yeah it was the most optimized version uh, i think <laughs> they still use a dreamcast now i think now that's uh, at the point where they could just emulate it but like back in like 
before like MAs are where they're at now, they used to just bring a key like a Dreamcast and a CRT TV, and they would just set that they would set it up. They would have fight sticks specifically for the Dreamcast, like rigged up. For nah, it. yeah. Recently, like recently. Mm, I don't know about recently. I think it's just mainly emulated now because I mean, like emulators are so crazy now. It's like super optimized. You can get mods for it to be like 120 FPS. You know, Dude, you can that's get like nice. remastered and stuff. That's cool. Yeah, I wonder if there's gonna be this this resurgence uh, as time goes on. Technology gets great. We can go back and uh, save some of these old titles and kind of bring them out of uh, extinction a little bit. We're like, kind of what we're like we're leaning towards with games. There's a lot of remakes. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. recent years has been a lot of remakes. I just want like I want each studio or, or dev or i mean it's probably going to be less and less companies as time goes on too i just want access to everything like i want access to i want to i want to spend a monthly fee and just have access to every single game and nintendo kind of does it xbox game pass you know i'll say xbox game pass the greatest bang for my buck i've ever invested in. yes 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 I, I, i've never had it until so this year titles yes and people are like, oh, it's always the worst games possible. I'm like, dude, there's 500 plus games on here. Like, that's just not true. I was playing. I got to play Death Stranding, um, Signalis. Signalis was a crazy game. I got to play High on Life when it first came out off of Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, that was that was a cool little game. But like, I mean, there's still like they have Persona Five uh, Royale, like the it had all the Mass um, Effects at one point. Yeah, you could play like, through yeah. every single Mass Effect, and you're like, oh, it's just like the library was like, insane on it. Dude, you're just not looking hard enough. You're not willing to try out new stuff. You like want all the major major AAA titles on there, and if it's not on there, you're like, oh, this is this is crap. You're like, no, this is there's there's a lot, and also they're catering not to just you, you know, the average whatever you know our, our it, uh, sure. fancy person is. You're like, <laughs> yeah. you're like, there's like, turns out there's a ton of people in the world, and people play all different kinds of games, so. Yeah. You're spending ten bucks to have access to the most games you've ever had access to in your life ever in in any yeah. in any period of time in history. So what's the problem? But I don't know. That's my rant. That's my rant on Game Pass. <laughs> I, point being, I support it. I'm all in. I I oh, never I'm had it until this year, and I I'm I'm down. Like, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Big fan of Game Pass. Yeah, I think it's a cool move. I really do. Yeah, and with the uh, now Xbox acquiring, um, or not acquiring, but now that the uh, FTC has been denied in court, now they're acquiring Activision Blizzard, so they're going to have Microsoft having even more access to more titles, exclusive access to more titles. I don't know if you saw that, but that recently yeah. went through. Like the Blizzard acquisition is crazy, yeah, but then. And they're saying like, oh man, like it's 10 years. Don't worry. Everyone will have Call of Duty for the next 10 years, but 10 years is not that long. It's not that it long. Not. It's not that it flies long. By. Yeah. It does fly by. And uh, then they're going to have exclusive access and they can just be like, nah, it's Xbox only now, which is crazy. That's crazy. I think That's my cr- biggest gripe on games right now, though, is them not pressing their files and the need to like just put out a product so fast that the game is finished like an example i could think of like off the top of my head is cyberpunk right mm. that game was hyped up i dude, the, i think the game was almost in production for like close to like a decade some of the best marketing ever yeah yeah, it, insane marketing. Like, yo, this game looks sick. It's like Keanu a Reeves. Futuristic, futuristic fucking GTA. You know, like, you have Keanu Reeves calling you Samurai. Like, what is, like, what's going on? Right. I need, I need, like, you know, like, like, what's happening? And then all of a sudden, like, the, the models were bugging out. Like, you, there's, like, the game would physically, like, break on, like, certain quests and stuff. And, like, on top of that, I think the game off drop was almost, like, 100 gigs. Like, Crazy. most consoles are 500 gigs and like the software on the console itself takes up half of that so you you realistically have 250 gigs to like mess around with on a standard console right 
So like we want one fifth of your memory. You're like, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, not... Yeah, we got this new title, but it's gonna take up pretty much three, just three quarters of your whole entire. <laughs> Is that cool? It's so cool. <laughs> you can have you can have like Warzone and then like a story game, and then like, you're gonna have to call it. <laughs> like. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I yeah, no, that, that was crazy. Like that. Uh, so, so wait. So, the, your biggest gripe with games right now is that they don't compress files. Yeah, they don't compress files. I just feel like it's definitely doable. Uh, if we take more time on video games, we could definitely make it a reasonable size to where we can have multiple games at once on our hard drives. What? That's the most insane thing I've ever heard, man. <laughs> no, it's... <clears throat> my biggest gripe with games right now, when games are released and they're unfinished, yeah. that's, that's my biggest gripe with games right now. I think Gollum's a great example of that. I think Redfall is a great example of that. Uh, a great example of a game being released and it being completed. I don't know if you played Dave the Diver. I'm a huge... Comp- uh, yeah. proponent of that game have you have you tried that out yet no i haven't uh it's incredible it's incredible it's got like twenty thousand plus overwhelmingly positive reviews on steam it's an indie game it's like a it's like part farming restaurant management part mm. uh kind of like open adventure you're you're a diver you're, you're like under the ocean you're doing quests it's, there's like some rpg elements to it but it's also farm management restaurant management all the it's like highly detailed pixel art uh cool. it's got all these crazy cut scenes it's got like rhythm based dream sequence situation like they, every time i hit a new chapter in that game they they add this new element into the game where I'm, they didn't have like oh you didn't have to do this like what you this, if you had not included this, this would still be a great game. If you didn't include 25% of your content, this would still be a game leaps and bounds ahead of other things. I don't know about Cyberpunk too much. I never I never picked it up. I just know that the release was bad. But if that has been... Like, why was it not done before it was released? And you, you're saying that it was in development for a long time. Uh, why is it so, still not done? Like, why, why are you still so putting it out? So now, now it's done and they're releasing DLC for it. Um, it actually is a pretty good game. Yeah, but now how many finished. months later? Um, oh, dude. It, it, uh, I don't know. Exactly. Uh, I forgot. What? Like, why? Why is it not then? And, an even worse example was Final Fantasy XV. That game on release was horrid. The story was like... It, it, it's like um you know when characters in video games like lose their memory and like you have to get like fragments of them back through things you get that little cutscene that's what final fantasy like 15 like on drop felt like you felt like yeah you know pretty all right story ended pretty abruptly but i feel like we're not getting the whole picture here and then they dropped the royal edition which like again you have to pay for because there was like episodes for each character sure um each character had their own episode, giving them backstory and like what happened in like a certain like time skip in the uh, in the story, and that made the game amazing. They also added like more content to it, more depth to the story. It that is one of my favorite Final Fantasies now. After that, 15? that was like it was a really good yeah, it was a really good game. Yeah, okay. but like the problem is you shouldn't it, it shouldn't have to come to the company having to drop separate like content that you have to pay for for it to be fixed yeah uh, <laughs> i don't know how you argue that the other way <laughs> exactly but but like, but like why well, i do know for like final fantasy 15 specific thing um five years in it was a separate project like it was it was a completely different project and then i think there was something wrong with the production team where like someone got cut and then um files were lost and whatnot and then they had to like restart it halfway through so i think it was like a 10-year project pretty much and they had to do it in half the time i don't but like (laughs) why but like they it's not like they're not testing the game so why are you putting it out knowing like you're put, you're like, hey, this isn't done, and then someone's like, yeah, just throw it up. Yeah. You're like, what? Like, like, Why would you do that, Gollum? I don't know if you watch that so often. 
I, but like how how why, how is it how are they getting away with know. it like why would you even do that as a company I, I just feel like there's there's money people behind the scenes that are like hey we've given you enough money we've given you plenty of roadway or what we well, deem okay. as enough roadway or or uh uh i don't even know what to call it planes take off you know what i'm saying you know what yeah I'm but uh, that also might be a runway. part of it too it's where like they can't get enough funding now so that they make do with what they have so that they cut corners because they literally they had to cut like square Enix wouldn't give them enough money like i know um Another game like uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. I don't yes. know if you ever played that game. Yes, it's on Game Pass. Um, super mad at that game. It had such a cool premise, and it kind of just like th- it felt like, you know, like you like you just like stop like stop by and like your roommate or somebody's just watching a random TV show and like oh I'm gonna sit down and watch this and you're just asking questions the whole time like you don't know what's really going on. <laughs> That's what Ghostwire Tokyo felt like. It felt like you just threw you into the middle of the story. And you're like, well. Listen, man, put two and two together here. We're going to give you the rest of the story because now you're sitting down and watching it and playing it. But, like, figure it out for the rest. <laughs> okay, was it a bad story or was it a poor so technical the story, execution? The story was cool. The story was cool, but it just, like, there was no, like, real background on the villain. You didn't really get a background on, like, the right-hand man of, like, the main character, which is, like, a pretty prominent part because the main character and the right-hand man are basically, like, it one with one in each, like in itself like they're they're sharing a body that's the best way to put it they're sharing like a body and like he's very vague on like the like the right hand man's very vague on his ties with the the villain and then like they kind of throw you into the group of like the right hand man and like you find like it's like it's just like a mess it's a mess but the story was good because it's like um Main character dies from like a car accident. Right hand man saves him, and then they become like he basically becomes possessed. And then now you just get sucked into this like this guy has to die because he's gonna like basically ruin the world. Okay. <laughs> like that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right. Like, so like, was it fun to 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 play? Oh, like, the, fun the gameplay was really fun. Um, you yeah. had like three. So um, you had like magical powers basically based off the elements so it was like wind uh water fire and i'm pretty pretty sure that was it it was those three and um you you like chuck your like orbs at the enemy and then at one point like their core pops out and then like you you can extract their core to give you back um like replenish your ammo essentially for like your abilities and um it would also replenish like your ultimate that you get, which is like slow down time, makes you like stronger or whatever. There's like skill trees and stuff too. Like there's pretty like good depth to the combat and um the way you can explore the world. Cause like you're you're quite literally in like a like a purgatory for Tokyo. Like you're in Tokyo, but it's like a the ghost world. So there's like ten which is cool. stuff in the air. Yeah, no, which it is was like a it cool, was really cool. Yeah, which is a cool setting. I mean that's yeah, yeah. But not completed. The game is not completed. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Like it, it was very abrupt ending. Like um, you don't really know the reason. You kind of know it because he kind of like hints at it. Like the main villain's like reason for doing things and certain stuff. Like he kind of put two together. But like you know, it would have been cool to see like the inner monologue or you know some more backstory on the guy possessing you, you know, like, how did this come about? Like, where did he die? How was his life? Like, why is he so stoic on so and certain, like certain situations, you know? Yeah. And that's like kind of where like the games like 2012, I, I think we just set the bar too high with those games, man. Cause like, <laughs> with, oh, with, with all releases in 2012. Yeah. Like the PS4 releases, like from 2012 to 2014. Oh my God. We had near near Automata. We had uh, well, not really near, but near Automata. We had Persona Five. We had uh, the Shadow of Colossus remake. Dude, you know? Shadow of Colossus. I never played that game, but all the re- so like, good. I got hyped watching reviews of that game because I never had a PlayStation. <laughs> I got hyped watching like the. Uh, do you remember G Four G TV? Yeah, yeah I, I remember watching G Four TV reviews and just watching the thirty second, forty five second clips of that game, like. 
I, I couldn't even copy. I was like, I didn't even know they made games like this. I, I didn't know like this was a genre. Like, there's yeah, they de- they don't make games like that anymore. There's no games with like cool depth to it. Like Borderlands anymore, Two, really. Max Payne Three, Halo Four, Mass Effect Three, Far Cry Three, uh, New Assassin's Creed, Diablo Three, Bioshock. This is all 2012. Like, yeah, Clash of Clans. Whoa, Clash of Clans was 2012. That's crazy. That's a great year. That's what I'm talking about. Like that span from like 2012 to 2014, games were so good. Like I remember, like playing Dragon Quest 11. Dude, that I game, Dragon Quest on mobile, that was sick. Dragon Quest 11, literally, I I was playing that game in 12 hour sittings, because <laughs> I was I was so like addicted to the story. It was such a cool. It was it was like the, the, like the messed up part too. It was such a cliche story. It was like the hero. Oh, you're like the, the the chosen one. You gotta, uh, you know, defeat the the darkness. You're the light. You know, da, 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 all this stuff. Yeah, but, but it's a like, great story. The That's character dialogue, talking. like the character dialogue, yeah. the the fights. You know, the setup for villains. You know, like the redemption for certain characters. It was insane. Super good writing. And then you just have games like like Chainsaw Man, Chainsaw Lollipop. You know, where it's just like, hey, you know, we're here. <laughs> Dude, you know what's actually funny? Uh, that game. So I listened to to Rogan's uh, like I I went deep into like Rogan's podcast way in the earlier episodes. I was like, wonder what this podcast was like way way back. And the one of the devs from that game was on that on his show. Whoa! Like I'm pretty sure it was that game where they're doing promotion like promotional stuff on on his show like way back in the early the episodes i was like i've never even heard of this game this is wild and i'm I'm pretty sure it was it was is it lollipop chainsaw or chainsaw lollipop i think it's chainsaw lollipop pop chainsaw lollipop chainsaw lollipop chainsaw yeah there's also a i could be totally wrong on that but i'm dude this game there's like a um a super infamous uh, achievement to get on this game too if i remember correctly it was like it was like you were supposed to adjust the camera in such a way where you would uh like view the character you know in a way where you could like see all the parts you're not supposed to see oh, on the okay, character yeah. like that was one of the achievements where you if you Near Automata had that too. Re- oh really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like 2B one of the characters she's like the quote unquote like mommy of the game. Um she has a self destruct mode and her skirt comes off and it just shows like her bottoms. Right. And that was literally an achievement to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> I think Lollipop Chainsaw, man, I can't remember if that's the game. There was there was there was some video game that was on his on, on Rogan's show. I can't remember. Maybe it's not Lollipop Chain Lollipop Chainsaw, but I do know Lollipop Chainsaw has one of those one of those types of ch- achievements where you're supposed to manipulate the camera in such a way on like a certain level and uh you're supposed to like <laughs> Like see what you're not supposed to see in game, yeah. and you get an achievement for. It. Um, I never actually played that game. I don't even know what this is about. Like, who made this? Warner Brothers Interactive. Okay. I think it's just like one of those games where it's like, hey, there's like, there's gore, it's hot blonde lady, go to town, you know? Yeah. Not much depth. Kind of like, kind of like, kind of like, like a Duke Nukem. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. Um. Okay, so you were you playing fighting games, and then I guess what I know you started streaming during during the pandemic and COVID and everything. Were you playing Apex before that, or did you kind of like pick everything up as far as like competitive Apex so, around the same time? Funny thing about that, um, I actually started with Valorant and Borderlands Three. Um. When I when I went to Alaska, so the thing that sucked about Alaska was my ping was terrible on games. It was horrible. It was like it was like I was in like Japan playing on West Coast servers. Right. Um so I started with Valorant, but then like my ping was too high and it was like miserable to play out of like a higher elo. I was like, this is like miserable. I can't like hold the angles, I have to swing everything, as this is just not fun. So then uh 
I would like casually play Apex with my friends, like here and there, like when their game first came out. We would like play Rain for a little bit, hit like Plat, and they're like, ah, oh, whatever. Like, I don't feel like playing this anymore. It's getting too sweaty. I was like, I don't really care about this game. It's whatever. So then I played a lot of Borderlands 3. And then I would just like do builds, um, do like challenges on it and stuff. And then all of a sudden, uh, I think it was just like one random season to where I was like, hey, let's try and hit Masters. And me and my couple of my buddies, we hit Masters. And then we signed up for a Challenger circuit. <laughs> and that started my addiction to Apex. So, so explain to people what a Challenger circuit is if, they, if they're not familiar. So Challenger circuit is kind of like, like AAA in baseball or like the G League in basketball. Um. I think there's a total of four series of it. Um, it's a three-day event from Saturday, Sunday, to Monday. Um, day one and two are four games. So, f- like, day one, you're playing, like, 12 games. I think it's, like, three rounds. Day two, you're only playing two rounds, so it's a total of eight games. And then Monday, you're playing finals. And then... If you make it to like round four or five, you get points, and those two wins points to do the standings. Um, once you're high enough in the standings, you get into something called LCQ, the last chance qualifier for ALGS Pro League. Um, in that, you kind of just duke it out with like um pro league teams that didn't have good standings. And uh, if you take first, you get a spot in pro league. But I think this one um, is a little different because where our, the land is set up for it, um, you're going for champs, which is kind of like the go to champs qualifiers, I think, to where it's like you have a chance to go to land. And I, I don't know where the champs land is at, but all the lands have been in London so far this year. Are lands invite only? Um, yeah, so you have to be top 20 in, in a pro league. No, top 10, I'm sorry. Uh, and top all, 10 and... And all 10 get invited? So it, it's kind of based on regions. So we have APAC North, APAC South, um, EMEA, which is uh, Europe, NA, and I think that's it. I think it's only four really divisions. And I think NA got a spot, uh, an a, the additional spot, so it's top 11 now. And that's why we're having the LCQ stuff, because the team that won that gets... Um, a spot for next land. So, like, what's the what's the closest you've come to to getting an invite through, through um, Challenger series? Um, closest I got was like to round four. Um, at that point, you're kind of like right. Like the the thing is, you got to fight for your POIs, which is like where you land. And a lot of teams want your POI because it's really good. Like, example, I land Sky West and Down Beast. So, World's Edge, I land Sky West. Um, it's arguably one of the best POIs in the game because of a addition called Trials, to where it just gives you insane loot. Like, you're coming out of that POI. Oh, I know Trials. Like I know trials. I'm a platy yeah. daddy, dude. I go way back. <laughs> I, I played Apex uh, on release until. <sighs> Man. Um. I'm trying to like measure it by which characters were out or which characters were released. I'm trying to think, like, first of all, the do you remember when when Apex was released and they basically nothing was said? Yeah, there wasn't this like year long promotional. Dropped. It was just like, oh, Apex Legends is free. You can download it. And everyone's like, what? What is this? Because everyone was waiting for Titanfall. Yeah, uh, new Titanfall stuff. And then that game came out. I remember downloading it like. How is this game free? Like, this is wild. Yeah, it, it was pretty crazy when it first came out. It kind of broke the internet for a little bit. Yeah, yes. I, I think the strongest it. point, yeah, the strongest point of like Apex, though, I think it's it's the movement because of yes. the source engine. And yes. like the way people it just exploit the source engine is just insane. Uh, it's just crazy stuff. It's smooth. It's, a, yeah, it's, it's smooth. It's a... Gunplay is like really rewarding. There's a high TTK, so like you can. You know, yes. actually display your skill. It's not just like in Warzone where like you look at somebody and whoever shoots first is dead. Yep. You know, it was actual like outplay and stuff. So it's definitely rewarding on the the skill end. The maps, for sure. I mean, the maps are amazing. I I know like the longer a game goes on and the more competitive stuff that comes out of it, 
uh, the more complaints people have, all the changes, you know, they make changes constantly to, to stay fresh. Not everybody loves that. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been in a fantasy football league, but <laughs> when the commissioner makes changes, people get pissed, but it's, it's to like keep people interested, keep people playing. I understand that. I, I don't know. Like when you first started playing, right? The first three or four seasons game was, game was great. Now that we're in what, what's the season? What's the current season? Uh, we're in season 17 right now. Okay. So season 17, most people complain, right? Uh, this is arguably the worst season. Right. Okay. To there ever you go. <laughs> right. So like, does it get better? Do, do they, should they revert to seasons past? Like has the game evolved so, past seasons past? Like how do you, uh, how do you improve it? Right. Like take, give me, give I me. think, um, it, this is kind of like a problem with like competitive gaming in general. Um, you have to cater to the casuals. You yeah. just have to, well, I they mean, pay that's the, like your they main pay source of revenue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's your main source of revenue. But like the thing is, you can also make a dedicated server for Apex. Um, they've done it in the past with the LGS client to like go to previous patches when there was like game breaking bugs that like took long to fix. Um, they could definitely just kind of rehash that and kind of just make the game good again. Um, well, but so like the take main... two, like give me two things that you would take out to make the game better. Uh. In the actual game or like competitive, like for like ranked or like competitive, because <sighs> rank ranked is like a mess in its own right now. But competitive, I would probably, I don't know, I'd probably take out the Kraber and the L Star. One hundred percent. Those guns are insane right now, and I just don't think at that high of a level the Kraber should just be in somebody's hands. Um, because yeah. everyone's good. Well, like everyone's good, and like, he, like he, the Kraber's so punishing. Like you could hit someone in the body for 140 health. A Red Evo gives you 225 health. So like, you know, like that's a lot of damage. <laughs> like, like, it's a well, lot of irreversible damage that like, can't really be. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, like that you can just like literally just take a, like a little peek, like a, like a gopher, and then all of a sudden, boom you're 189 in the head you know like it's it's a little too punishing for like something that really isn't a mistake sometimes you do have to peek out and like scout an area you know and you get punished for that um that's been a thing i mean uh, like i haven't been plugged into apex for the last handful of seasons i mean just being on the outside looking in uh, the, those legendary type weapons i mean is that even something that should be included in 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 rank gameplay, I mean, there's so much like so much RNG with. I mean, with, ranked with a BR in general. Like, ranked it makes it fun because you go for like cool Kraber clips. You know, you can take like a Horizon Q up, Pathy Grapple up, three sixty no scope. Yeah, but you can it's do like, that. Oh, you can do that in non ranked games. Yeah, but like when there's money involved, the is it where... is it is it too is it too much for? for yeah, it's, when I, I think I think when money's involved, that gun is just insane. Like it's. It's literally the only gun in the game that could one shot somebody. Depending on your shields. So, like I mean, if, the, a, a comp player. So, you, you know, a player like yourself would say that's that's unfair because, because. I mean, I've had like fights to where like I shouldn't have won it, but I was doing some dumb stuff and I no scope crater the guy and we won the fight. Like that, that gun is such a win clause. It, it's insane. So, if that was removed, then balanced? Like, is it a. I mean, there's like still how like much other of a better layers. spot is the game if that's removed? Uh, I definitely think competitive will be a little more enjoyable in certain aspects, but right now the main problem is character meta. Um, I would say that's the biggest issue right now for character meta. Why? Uh, so, as the game started, it started out inherently defensive. Like more like survival aspect, right? And then I want to say in the Raleigh land, which is like two to three years ago at this point, um, Furia, uh, that their IGL hated the meta. Uh, it was Gibby Caustic Valk. Um, as you know, Gibby and Caustic are super defensive legends. So oh, geez, would, too. Yeah. 
so you that was Gibby was meta straight up for like 10 seasons. He was like undisputably one of the best characters in the game. He's the only one that couldn't get one shot by a Kraber. You had a bubble res. There's nothing to really counter the bubble. Gibby bubble even count counter cost of gas if placed rightly. Like he was just an insane character. And then all of a sudden, boom, seer dropped, right? Like he, at first he was insane. Good. Okay. Um, that's actually the season that nerfed. I that I that's actually the season that I stopped playing. Was okay. It was so the was... Seer Seer got released and right after <laughs> that was out for a while, that's why I stopped. Dude, I I remember that. I remember that. I remember yeah. like so Seer when the game got first released. Came out, yeah. Everyone's the... like, this character is single handedly the most broken yes, thing in the game. Yes. Then he got nerfed, right? Um people thought he was gutted. Like he was like, yo, this character's horrible. He's not gonna be viable in comp anymore. And then his Watson was like, yo, guys, like, see, so you're still kind of crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. And everyone's like, nah, bro, you're, you're like, you're going no Gibby, you're trolling. Because his his comp was a Valk Horizon Seer. And that kind of was like the whole turning point in what the game is now. Um, is it still they that? Went to land. It's not that exact comp. That exact, that, that comp now is kind of like bad. Um, was it Horizon because comp- of the ult? Because it's not the Q. So, so the main reason why that comp was so good was because everyone was on Gibby, right? That comp hard countered bunker comps. The like so, Seer Ultimate used to be really crazy. Now it's kind of bad because they nerfed him again, but gave him a huge buff at the same time. But I'll get into that a little later. Um, the whole play was. You either crack somebody, you scan them, you throw your seer ult, and then you kind of push them into a corner, horizon ult them, nade spam them, and they would just fall over. Or you would just get a crack, you cancel their healing with his Q, and then you just kind of win the fight. It was like kind of like that situation. It was super aggressive. Like there were you were just death balling teams. Um then it kind of turned into the gauge game being more edge heavy. Where like you're playing the edge of zone, you're kind of going for more kills, you're killing people to get your spot in the zone. Um, and then it kind of death bowled into now what it is now. Like now the meta is kind of more open. Before it was like everyone was on Seer Valk Horizon. That was like the only comp you could fucking run. That was uh, you know, if you're not running this, you're trolling. Like it's dumb not having a seer. It's you know, it's a lot of things. Um then Seer, I think he got nerfed again with his heartbeat. And some teams were like, I want to play Bloodhound. And then it kind of devolved into Horizon Bang Seer. And then people were like, whoa, this comp is way more impressive than the Seer Valk Horizon. So then that was meta for a little bit. Um, Still kind of is for edge teams. But yeah, Furia put that map on the comp and they absolutely dominated Blint. They were so like convincingly just like dunking on teams that like his Watson was literally 360 PK and gimme teams because of how free the fight was. Uh I think uh Watson literally got like um Raleigh MVP and he he had the most kills. I mean like Fear was like literally steamrolling lobbies like it was a pub. Because the comp was so far and ahead. The comp was the, the comp was so polar opposite of what was happening. It just worked so well because it, it's it's fire and ice, right? So like, should they? I guess teams like that should they be applauded then for for looking at whatever the meta is and going, hey, let's do the opposite of that. And see, well, that's kind of we do. That's kind of what the game has become now. Everyone's trying to be ahead of the ball curve. And, I like that though. If oh, it's no, constantly I, I evolving, great, like I feel like that's great. I think it's for a, a great game. turn for the game. Yeah. But now we're at a point to where the game is so hyper aggressive that like um I don't know how to explain it. You don't really need good rotations anymore to do well in the in the game or tournaments in the tournament standings. Like it's not as much necessary. Like I, we're at the point now to where like playing hard zone, which is like you hit a beacon, see where next zone is, and uh, kind of at the level you can, after you hit like the ring beacon, 
you can basically predict what the final zone is going to be and you set up there, right? That's just not viable now. It's hybrid. Either if you if you if the zone is in your POI or in like a POI close to you, you can play zone. But if it's if it's like a far zone for you, you're flexing edge. Like there there's no trying to play zone from across the map anymore. Like that's just not doable because of how many teams play edge and how aggressive everything is now. And with the addition of Catalyst and Seer's new um, buff slash nerf, uh, the game is super punishing for like minute mistakes or not even like minute mistakes. It's just the fact that they got a crazy angle and they just could exploit you because of Seer. Because now his Q, they took away the cancel for every interaction. Um, it still scans, but now you get a silence, so you can't use abilities for 10 seconds, and you get a slow for 2.5 seconds. So you're you're stunned for 2.5 seconds, and you can't use ability for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is a long time. Yeah, especially in that game. Yeah. How fast the fight's going on. That's a long time. So the cancellation <laughs> has been removed? Yeah, that's yeah. gone. Now I remember, it's dude, slow do you remember when it was released? It was like cancellation, damage, <laughs> stun. <laughs> like, yep. And you could use it, what, every 15 seconds or something? Yeah, it was a crazy low cooldown. I remember, like I remember when he was released, dude. Everyone's like, this is hilarious. Why would this have so many extras? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> but it's crazy, like, no matter how many times he's been reworked, the character is still viable at a high level. But, but- like the thing is that it's he's at the point now where you either make him a scan legend or a legend that silenced things. He he just can't be both. It's just too overpowered. You can't have someone that can see through walls and then just make you not be able to play the game. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's just it, it it just makes no sense. Like yeah, it makes no sense. Like I can't use my abilities. My passive doesn't work now because I'm silenced. But you can see me through the wall, and then you can throw a giant dome down to where if I walk around, you see me. Wait, so how do the they walls. nerf his his ultimate? Because ultimate um, was just when I was playing, so it, it was just it used to be it used to be just diamonds, right? Yeah. So it'd be diamonds. If you're not crouched, you would see a diamond. Yeah. Now it's like footsteps. So you see like little like diamonds on the floor, like like footstep trails as they're walking. Right. Oh, so but, the... oh, it's not really that useful anymore. It's more so you're synergizing. Uh, like ultimates with his Q, his Q is just insane right now. Like it, it's the best ability in the game by far. Um, it used to be before. So when Catalyst first came out, um, in the trailer, I don't know if you watched a trailer for that. She was supposed to be like the anti-scan character. Her wall, her ultimate was supposed to be you're not supposed to be able to see through her wall right no scans no see your old no bloodhound scan no crypto drone no nothing right crypto emp couldn't destroy the wall she was just like a hard counter for everything. It's like yo this character is insane when the game when she came out they uh that's not what happened so what people used to do in end games it was miserable to watch miserable to play um they would drop a cat wall in end game and then drop the see your old and they would literally shoot diamonds. That was the call. It said boys were shooting diamonds. And <laughs> that that was it. You, you're not seeing anybody. You're not like even trying to like personally interact with the characters. No interaction. You don't see the character. You just see a diamond. And that's how a lot of the fights were. They would throw up Catwall, C-Roll, and shoot diamonds. So, okay. So like, so in season yeah. seventeen, you're saying it's the worst season ever. But but why? Um, so for ranked, um, so there's always been a big problem with ranked, with like uh, rank inflation. Um, there's never really been a hard reset, besides like season thirteen split one, arguably the best season ever of Apex. Um. So season 13 split one, it punished you super hard for running down lobbies and dying early, right? Um, it was really high entry. I think you at one point it was like 80 KP, like 80, like 80 points, like negative 80 points, like entry cost per rank game for like high diamond. And then once once you hit masters, every a thousand, your entry cost would go up by five. 
So when you hit pred, like high pred, it would be like literally like 200 point entry fees. And then that they didn't really reward KP, which was stupid because now you have a really high um, entry cost and you literally have to either farm the lobby, which is something which is what they didn't want. <laughs> right. And uh, it led to worst quality lobbies. And then the matchmaking was long. Um, casuals were complaining about it, so they made the matchmaking shorter by making the quality of the games worse by having literal pred players play against like plat players or diamond players that were like okay at the game, but they're not at that level. So it was just preds farming lobbies where like they're just dropping like 20 bombs. They had like as a team and dropping like 40 kills a game. It was ridiculous. That was split two of season 13. Split one was awesome. I'm talking, there's like ALGS end games where like people are playing like these niche little corners. You know, we're playing Newcastle and Gibby dropping a wall. You know, we're like tactically trying to take over a building and stuff. It was actual like, it, it was fun to play because you, you earned your points. You know, like, you know, I earned that win. But now with season uh, 17, they did a hard reset. Everyone started at bronze, but this is where the issue came in. The entry cost was a flat rate. And no matter what, if you hit top 10, no matter how many kills you have, you got plus 20. So what happened was the beginning of the season, um, people were like, yo, this rank system's kind of like broken. You know, it's like a free, free pred in the first week. Sweet energy, sweet dreams. Someone who I watched Literally, a lot of, by the way. I yeah. that he's like his videos, his series where it was just him going from remember like the, there was a period of time where you'd have all these really good players go and do the I'm streaming until I hit Predator. I'm starting at Bronze Bronze yeah. 4 until I hit Pred. I, I watched those streams religiously. Uh, I liked his videos a lot where he would like, he'd be like, okay, guys, like, it, it'd be mid-fight, right? And like, in mm -hmm. my world, I'd be freaking out. He'd be like, all right, guys, we're getting shot. Go ahead and heal up. Like, why don't you go here? You'll go here. Why don't you, like... Let's let, let's poke this guy until until we get a crack or a down, and then we'll do this. Like him, like being able to, and I'm sure players at that level, all those players would be able to do that. I just for whatever reason, I got sucked into his his content for a while, where oh, he he's would a just like show guy. he would do like live coaching. Basically, he's like, all yeah. right, guys, like they're gonna push us from the left. One of us might go down, but that's okay. Like we'll get each other up, and you know I'll go ahead and take these two guys out. You know, especially in the lower levels. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take these two guys out, no no problem. And like you guys can clean it up. Uh, you know, let me know if you, you need extra help or whatever. Which is insane. Like that's yeah. Okay. I mean, so like sick, Sweet's but... a Sweet's a one of a kind, like IGL at that point. Um, the the way he breaks down plays for his teammate, it, it's like an ESPN yes, Sports yes. Center highlight, yes. like replay. You know, like, Sorry, he he breaks it down into like such a depth to where it's like, um, it's insane. Like no other yeah. IGL does that. Yeah. Um, but back to season seventeen, so they made it to a flat rate. So it was it was thirty five points, no matter what elo, for you to get into a game. Right. Um, that's problem number one. Problem number two is the matchmaking was still horrible. So like I'm masters with like almost 40 K points right now. And I literally get like silvers and like golds and bronzes my in people, my game. My people. You know, and like that's just not fair to them because to me that's free KP. I'm running down the lobby. You know, <laughs> like um so that's one issue. And then uh, the other issue is in between each rank, it was only a thousand points to get into the next uh, tier of rank until you hit masters. Um, making it really fast because you gain, on average, you would gain like 200 points per win if you just had like three kills and just ratted until the rest of the game. Um, back to sweet though. The first week of the season, he ratted to Pred. He did not get a single kill, did not do a single bit of damage. He was literally zeros all across oh, the board. And that's... everyone was like, yeah, this rank system is broken. And the funniest thing is, this season was like almost 90, I think it's 70 days long. And they have done nothing to update it. No, hey guys, you know, we're 
here's some plans we have to change the rank system. Nothing. And that's what, and like, that's kind of why, like, respawn, like, people are mad at respawn. People complain about it because um, they do a lot of things that aren't in the patch notes, or they'll introduce a bug and then they don't know about the bug. We find out about the bug and it takes like months for the bug to be fixed. Um, an example, a really funny, there's actually two examples that are really funny. One example is Caustic. Caustic had a bug for like 12 seasons that no one thought was a bug. They just thought it was an intentional design in the game. So when you kill a Caustic, his gas was supposed to just disappear. Yeah, it didn't disappear. Yeah, I remember this. It didn't, that was a bug for 12 seasons. They just let it slide for 12 seasons. So, wait. <laughs> that Okay, so they like said it was a bug and no, they, they weren't didn't, fixing they, it? They they just randomly admitted like, hey, guys, you know that Cossack, that funny, quirky Cossack thing that he does? That that wasn't intentional, but we fixed but it. But no, so no one said anything? Everyone thought it was intentional. Because like, why, why would you, why would, how, why is the bug 12 seasons long? Why did, why did it take 12 seasons to, to fix a bug for a character that's meta? You know, like he, he has a high pick rate in higher ELO lobbies. He had a high pick rate in competitive. You know, people do like to play him in pubs, but I mean, like, even then, you don't like you don't hear your player base complaining like, "Hey, dude, this cost thing's really dumb. I hate cost." He's like one of the most hated characters in the game. It's like him, and then probably like Crypto or Vampire. Um, another funny thing is, um, Respawn likes to do changes, and then not put them in the patch notes. Um, a really funny example is with TSM's old landing spot. They've reduced so TSM's old landing spot was Frag East. Um, that's like quote unquote the streamer area where like a bunch of like streamers, like pub stompers would go, and that's where they were farm lobbies. So to combat them kind of ruining that POI, making pubs only like that place on World's Edge, they've reduced the loot quality, but they didn't put it in the patch notes. And that's a big deal for teams that land there in competitive because now because money they don't involved. know that. Yeah, there's money's involved. You're literally coming out with like no shields, like a P20 and like a stick, you know. And yeah, then, but like your pro, figure it out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, one of the players was like, hey, did you guys like nerf Fraggies? And they're like, no, man, we, we didn't nerf it. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, you're delusional. And then like a month later, they're like, yeah, um, we actually did kind of nerf it. We just didn't want to admit to it because we forgot to put it in patch notes. How do you forget, though? <laughs> For real. And then um, another great bug that happened um they, when they introduced the gun the new ar the the nemesis um it's a burst energy ar one of the most broken guns in the game right now on the floor um it's a three burst gun and the more you shoot it the faster the fire rate gets and i think it the more you shoot it or the more you connect with shots just the more you shoot it interesting you can just shoot into the ground and get it a full ramp up that's and then just interesting it should be when yeah. you connect i agree <laughs> or they should just add it to like a turbocharger attachment to where it can do that <sighs> and then have a connect thing, you know? But that's neither here nor there. Um, when the gun came out, so the funny thing with energy weapons, um, they have a, a weird audio that interacts with the game, right? So when the Nemi came out, um, it literally broke the audio in the game. There was points to where you would, you, you literally had no audio. Um, like you could not hear a thing. Um, you get nades thrown at you, and there was no sound for the nade. There was no indicator for the nade. Um, you can't hear yourself getting shot at. Like, remember the charge rifle, how it's, like, really loud? People were getting no audio charge rifle, and they're like, where, where am I getting shot from? Uh, I'm going to freak out. Like, how did I just die? Because that one file from the Nemesis being added broke all the audio in the game. How? <laughs> <laughs> So it's like simple, it's like little things like that. And then Respawn said nothing for like weeks. And it was literally like in tournaments, people were dying to like no audio grenades, no audio gunshots, no audio like people just walking up because they physically everything just sounds muffled or they're straight up like it sounds like the game's on mute. <laughs> like it was it was getting ridiculous. A game you know? where audio is pretty important, by the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
uh yeah it was, it was pretty funny so that that's that's kind of a reason why people complain a lot about apex i agree there's certain things that just don't need to be complained about like i feel like you like they're being nitpicky but like on issues to where like the game is like physically incapable of operating how it's supposed to be i uh, i agree the devs should be getting some gentle flack no death Sh- threats or anything but you know yeah i mean <laughs> so like when the game is first released the complaints are minimal and oh, people i just like the season at first um they're like yo this is really fun i'm having fun again you know and then as soon as the season kind of like goes out and then like boom random patch note comes out new problem arises like yo this game is horrible why do i play this game you know they play it because it's fun. Like yeah, at I mean, the end yeah, of the day, there's no other it's, game that could replicate what it does. That's the issue too. It's got to like, it's. I think in a fair way, it's probably the best BR on the market. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I, it it just is. I mean, it, it is. It is, and uh, people have higher expectations, which is fun, and devs should be raising their expectations and I'm sure they are in a lot of ways but again the longer the the game lives you have less and less of the original teams that are working on it yep. you have a lot more money involved a lot more pressure from money people um you may have like a lot more turnover with the original teams that worked on the game so maybe you get a lot uh less people who are passionate about fixing it um and especially when more money's involved for for pro players or high level competitors like yourself, it's like you got you guys. You have a an excuse to be more, um, I guess, to pass more scrutiny on to the game and like, hey, these are real problems. These need to be fixed. I have a less of a chance of earning money at a, at a high level if uh, little stupid stuff in the game affects my gameplay. You know, little things like audio, you know, things that aren't that important, but like things, things that are that important. Um, so it's, I don't know, man, it's, I've never been a, a competitive player at that level. So I just, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the dirty casual that they appeal to because I'm spending $200 <laughs> on a battle pass and, and buying all these skins. So I don't know. It's, 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 it can't be easy. I mean, it's, oh, it's definitely not easy. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's definitely hard work, and that's why, I, like you know, I, I think the biggest thing is just no communication. Um, the no communication communication's gotten so bad that uh, tier one orgs are now uh, basically put basically putting data miners on salary to go into the files of the game and look at the true patch notes. What? The fuck? Because, uh, fun fact. The patch notes are like surface level changes. There, there's so many changes that they just don't note on the patch notes, and it's insane. Like they'll change like beacon rate spawns, which is like kind of a big deal in general for the game. You know, um, they'll change loot spawns. They'll change uh, straight up just like loot quality in a whole POI and just not put it in. why like what's the benefit of that do you, you do you really think it's oversight they just forgot uh i don't know i really can't put my thumb down on it i mean like the pros have found like their loophole in the thing um there's a big controversy because when data miners were first introduced um tsm their coach now raven um he him and um this guy nigerian sea lion he's furious head coach now um they were both very heavy into data miners. They're very big, like theory crafters. Um, they kind of like cook up some crazy comps. And it's kind of like led them to the success, success, uh, the success that they had now. And um, TSM would have a map of the zones in the I game. I saw that. I saw that. Um, yep. That's kind of what cooked up the whole controversy of, of data miners. And then now every team has one. <laughs> that's so crazy dude. yeah so if you want to be successful you got to become homes with a data miner and you got to get a coach well with <laughs> that i think that's a great i think that's a great stopping point 
Yep. Uh, if you want to be successful in competitive Apex, you need a data miner. That's kind of where we're at right now. Season yep. 17, though, still popular. I mean, yeah, the game's projected to be popular for like 10 years. It came out like, what, 2019? So 2029. 20, Looking for the game to be dead. And Apex 2 comes out. Apex 2? <laughs> what? No. Can we, <laughs> Can we not? Can we not? Can we not? Whatever Watch is doing. Can we not? Uh. Well, um, that is a a good stopping point. I think uh, we're at about an hour and ten minutes right now, man. Um, again, I appreciate the time and, and hanging out. I, I'd love to do it again. Uh, remind the folks where they can find you, what projects you're working on. Uh, you, you know, share any handles uh, where people could add you, and uh, yeah. Um, you can find me mainly on Twitter and Twitch uh, at it's Fujitora. I'll probably be streaming some form of an FPS game. And uh, Twitter, I'll be doing some uh, wonky tweets, some funny ha-has. And, I will uh, say the the meme game on your Twitter account is equal parts disturbing and like funny. <laughs> dude, I swear, That's my whole humor, I man. swear, dude. <laughs> I know. I appreciate it a lot, actually. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Go ahead. But recent projects, um, I'm looking to make a new clip dump soon. I just put one out like pretty recently, a couple days ago. Um, now I'll be streaming a little more often whenever I play games and just get clips. Start posting on my Twitter more. Pretty much it. Twitter's where to be at if you want to know what I'm doing. Not threads. Twitter. Well, I don't have Instagram, so. <laughs> uh, well, cool, man. I again, I appreciate the time. Thank you for coming on. Um, as always, my name's Peter. Hey, at, dude, anytime, anytime. Uh, I got my Nako stories on all things social. This is episode 15 of Creators Unplugged, and we will catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>